In this session, we will build a model of a slider crank with an electric motor actuating the crank. From the multi-body library, we drag a fixed frame into the workspace, followed by a rigid body to represent the mass and center of gravity of the crank. Right-clicking on the icon lets us change the orientation of the icon. We add two rigid body frames to define the offset from the center of gravity to both ends of the link. Adding the Revolute joint allows the crank to rotate around the fixed frame. Similarly, the connecting rod is given a degree of freedom with the Revolute joint. The components that represent the crank are then grouped into a subsystem. Subsystems can be parameterized and reused. Enter the subsystem by double-clicking. We can then parameterize the mass and length of the link. Parameters need to be defined in the parameter list of the subsystem. You can assign each variable the type, default value, and default unit. Let's return to the workspace. The parameters for each subsystem can be viewed and changed in the Inspector tab. Now, we will duplicate the subsystem to create a connecting rod. A subsystem can be shared or standalone. Shared subsystems can be duplicated, but the structure is maintained across each instance. Each instance of a standalone subsystem, however, is unique. Here, the subsystem is converted to a shared subsystem. We then change the mass and length of the connecting rod. We then add another rigid body to represent the mass and center of gravity of the slider. A prismatic joint constrains the movement of the member along the x-axis. A revolute joint is added, connecting the second link to the slider. We then attach a probe to plot the position of the slider. Next, we simulate the model. The visualization window contains our plots and animation. Here, you can create custom plots, compare multiple simulations with different parameters, and interact with the animation. Now, let's attach an electric motor to drive the crank. From the electrical library, we can drag in a DC permanent magnet motor and connect its rotational flange to the revolute joint of the crank. The DC motor needs a voltage source. In this instance, the voltage is constant. Let's view the rotational speed of the DC motor with a probe. Let's simulate the model again. We can see the effect of the motor driving the crank.